Welcome back to part 6 of Hayabusa swapping my electric city car. For those of you that are unaware, this is a 1970s electric wedge with a full aluminum frame. The first thing I did is ditch the vintage and outdated suspension and replace it with my own custom race inspired suspension. The idea is to make this thing handle like it's on rails. Now what you'll see me do in this episode is refine the rear suspension, the rear subframe and redo it. Simply because I just didn't like how it looks. So I bent the subframe to be a one piece, that way it has enough clearance for the sprocket and I can locate all the suspension tabs. Alright guys, so we got the new Heim joint placement. It's going to be a little bit wider than it was before. I'm going to make some spacers so that you can, um, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so Senkut Sen has been coming in really clutch. I've been ordering all my suspension tabs from Senkut Sen. I have a link in the description. Great way to save time. With their service, you don't have to use CAD. You can just use their online parts builder and come up with uh, anything. I've never built anything this heavy, never built anything this powerful, and if we throw a boost at this thing, it'll have the capability of pulling wheelies. You know, the suspension has to be on par, perfect. Despite how I have these heim joints mounted, we're still going to be able to adjust the toe, but now what I'm working on is the upper control arm. So, originally I was just going to use the Miata one. The shock would kind of have to squeeze in between this A-arm right here, and that would be impossible. So. Having a tubular A-arm, we could squeeze the shock in in here somewhere, and that would be perfect. So when your control arm is this short, your wheel follows an arc, and the wheel actually cambers in with suspension travel. For us, though, I'm particularly using this car for straight lines, and uh, I'll do occasional off-roading, I'll do occasional track use. Next thing you'll see me do here is add cross bracing to the A-arms because now they just twist and flex too much. Um, now the goal is to not overbuild them because, you know, you, you do want them to absorb energy in the event of a collision. So, you know, just finding that perfect balance. And as you can see here, I'm testing it and it still is not stiff enough for my liking. So we're going to have to up the diameter and tubing. All right, guys, so I've marked a spot here and that's where I'm going to drill the hole for our heim joints. We'll have one here and then we'll need to build a bracket so that that line matches that line and that height is the same as that height and vice versa. Got the big boy coming out. Let's hope. Our wrists stay intact. Runaway drill. So I had to do quite a bit of measurements to get the X and Y axis to line up. And we got this bracket here. 
And then I got the steel one cut out. It's gonna go about like that. Wow, that looks amazing. All right guys, so I've been tweaking the suspension quite a bit, you know, almost a couple hours of just tweaking. And we had an issue of the, the A-arm was flexing a lot, so I had to relocate some of the bars. And now we're trying to get into the shock placement, so like that, it's the most convenient. But, you know, this shock only has like one inch, one and a half inches of travel. So having it set up like that is going to mean the travel is going to be pretty whack. So... I might have to scoot that thing in as much as it will go. All right guys, so we got our Miata coilovers right there ready to weld. And then we got this uh, little bucket up here. You know, that's steel and that's aluminum, but luckily I have my new Revolution 2500 welder, which can do both steel and aluminum at the same time. I have a lot of faith and trust in these frame rails not snapping off because there's so many things mounted to these frame rails. I mean, those welds are doing their job though, but yeah, we're gonna have to beef everything up. Check that out guys, we got full penetration, it's welding very nice and um, the reason why there's black suit is because this is 6061 and 6061 naturally leaves a lot of suit but you can see we have uh, a good cleaning zone right here, we're, we're running the perfect amount of argon. Now with these brackets though, I don't fully trust this aluminum so I am going to add a brace from this roll cage down into these brackets, um, you know aluminum does some weird things. Yeah, 
I think the suspension is a little bit undersprung though, but this works. Yeah, I don't want to jump on it too much. Alright guys, so I added even more beef to the front subframe. Alright, so in the last episode I had some bump steer on the steering and I didn't have enough time to fix it. So I've just been messing with the steering trying to eliminate the bump steer from last video. And um, what I found is this new spot here. And check this out. So yeah guys, that's about as close to zero as I'm going to get. But unfortunately, unfortunately though, I can't lower the steering rack anymore um, because of this bar. So what I might have to do is flip this tie rod up. All right, so flipping it around does not work. We don't have enough angle in there to reach the steering rack. So what I'm gonna have to do is just cut that tab off and twist it upwards. Alright, so after about an hour of tinkering with the steering, I think I finally found uh, as close to zero as I'll get. So, check this out. We're only going to have about that much travel. And as you can see, the spindle does change camber drastically, but there's not really any toe in or toe out. Now I'm preheating the cast steel spindle to achieve a good weld, and then I'm going to TIG weld it. Now, actually, guys, I've been holding on to this footage for almost a month. I just didn't have enough footage for an episode, and I finally do. So let me know if I should keep this troubleshooting in my videos or not. Um, I feel like it definitely might help some of you out there. I let these spindles sit in a bucket of sand, and then I used a jig to replicate the other side as well. So we got those welded and installed, and then we got some fresh new rotors. So yeah, that fixes the bump steer issue. I'm gonna be quite honest with you guys. Every time I look at the suspension, I'm in awe. I mean, it really came out sick. Check this thing out. It's fully suspended. We got all the suspension done. So if you're tired of seeing me work on suspension, we got it finally knocked out. Really especially happy with how the rear suspension turned out. We're obviously going to have to play with the spring rates, play with the adjustments. This was a lot of work, lots of engineering, lots of thought went into all the suspension. If only it was as simple as just hooking wires up to this thing and going for a test drive, but it's not. There's still going to be a couple more episodes. We got to get the fuel tank, the cooling system. We got to get a new motor because this is just a mock-up motor. We got to brace up this whole aluminum frame. We're nearing the light at the end of the tunnel. Super excited. If you are, drop a like down below. And with that being said, guys, I have to catch you in the next episode. Stay tuned. Peace and God bless.